Hi there, people. It's Edgar, uh, your pre-med student here, uh, giving you guys a new episode here on uh, how to, uh, you know, tips and uh, different tools that you could utilize uh, doing your pre-med. Um, I came up with a list that I personally use, and I've done it for a couple of years now, especially during the high school years and now in college, too. That's helped me succeed, and so far, uh, you know, everything that I've, you know, submitted has been about 98% to 100% on my grades. So uh, I want to start off with uh, Cornell Notes. Okay, Cornell Notes to be more exact. Uh, I've been using those since high school. I was an avid for four years. Um, I'm actually proud to say that. So four years of avid in high school has taught me how to uh, do these Cornell Notes, which we call, most people would like to say avid notes because we basically adopted that method. And throughout the whole nation, most people are familiar with Cornell Notes. Um, Cornell Notes, this is, if you haven't seen it, please go research it. Um, to get a little more better information, but I'll give you the uh, lowdown of it for right now on how I personally take Cornell notes, or as I'm going to call it for this video, Avid notes. Okay, anyways, Cornell notes. What I do, uh, usually what you have here, in my personal notes here, these are your Cornell notes, okay? So what you do is on one side here, you write a subject. So for in this one here, I wrote polar molecules on this side and I drew a line down and I gave an explanation on my own words on what you know uh, polar bonds were between molecules so that gave me the definition here on top here I put the question which is you know the subject that I'm talking about here I put the subject like the chapter that we're going over and at the bottom a lot of people like to do their summaries uh, I like my personal self I don't really do summaries as much some people do I find it you know as far as I'm concerned I don't need to do it but some people do but what I did do is on the opposite side of my binder I drew the actual molecules and how molecules work and different ions and this and that so basically that was my summary but I did it in a dire you know like a different like picture model there um, but you could also do your summary on the bottom on hybrid method you want to do it you either could write it out or you could do my method if it's special about chemical bonding this is for biology uh, I just drew it out so I had a better understanding of how different things worked in different valent shells and other things of that nature. So those are your Cornell notes. Next, I want to explain to you uh, underlining. Um, what I do, well, since this is college now, uh, I buy all my books, and especially for your pre-med courses, you're going to end up most likely keeping that book instead of selling it. So what I do is I write all over my books and I underline different subjects. Um, what I do with this method is, I go in with the original color as in black with like a black sharpie like thin uh, thin uh, pin and what I do is I underline when I first start off I underline you know everything that I don't that you know words that I'm not familiar with so I go and underline the black with black and then uh, you know I read everything else and I try to actually comprehend things and all that and I come back the next day or maybe that same day and then I underline I read I reread the whole thing and I underline it in a different color such as orange Okay, and uh, if, if you know that's my second time reading, so now I'm in I'm in track now. So I got the black to say that I've read it once, the orange to say that I've read it twice, and then I go back the third time as a review again. And I reread the thing three times, and I actually uh, underline it with a different color, such as red. So now at the end of the whole thing, now I know that uh, for that particular chapter, I've read it three times, and I've from from then on I know that I've actually kind of mastered that uh, con the concepts that are in there and memorized uh, everything that's in those pages. Uh, like I like to show you here, I don't know if you can see the color specifically, uh, but as you look closer to the book, you can see different colors there. You see the red, the black, and the orange, meaning that I've read it three times and I've tried to understand different concepts and I try to relate things between one another um, to understand the bigger picture of the whole thing. Um, another one here, let's see, these are like diagrams there that even you could do with this as well too. You don't necessarily only have to do it with paragraphs, but when they show diagrams and different things of that nature, you could actually start doing different colors. Uh, so that's the underlining method, uh, which I mean, I find it the best because you know, you've gone over three times and then as you start going, you start noticing that the colors are, are less and less. Like the black, when you first start off, the black, you see a lot of black underlined because when you first start reading things, a lot of things don't make sense to you. So you see another black, and then the next color is orange or whichever color is preferable to you. And you see that there's, you know, a lot less orange than there is black. And then by the time you get to the red color, um, you pretty much know most of it. And there's barely, maybe there's some uh, lines connecting things 
with the red showing connections between concepts because you actually are starting to understand uh, how things work. Um, the last thing that I like to do is I like to write small essays. Uh, I get a piece of paper and um, say, I don't know, something simple as like cohesion and adhesion of water. And I like to go in there and I like to write a whole essay on it because sometimes that you think you've memorized everything of a certain concept. But when you start writing the essay, you start whole, you know, you start realizing that there's some words there that you want to fill into the essay, but you don't know them. So, whoops, you have to go back to the book and actually start, you know, reading and catching up on certain things and trying to memorize uh, certain concepts a little better than you would uh, with that. So, once you've written those essays, you've gotten the concept down, you reread the thing a couple times, as many times as you want. If you want to, you know, underline more than three times, go ahead if that's what it takes for you to memorize it. If you need to only underline it once, you know, just do that. Uh, like I said, write the short essays to actually understand, make sure, because even in the college level now, when you have examinations, they usually have you do short essays on, on huger concepts, so that's definitely a plus there, that, so, you know, when you write the essays, you know what to write. Uh, the last thing in that part is that I like to uh, tutor students. Um, I There's kids in biology that don't get concepts down right, and I go and I help them out, and not that, don't, you know, don't ever think that you're better than anyone because uh, no one is better than anyone, but you maybe could clarify things to other people that don't, um, you know, didn't pick up the concept right away. Um, so go ahead and help other individuals. That's why I'm filming this video so I can help you guys succeed too as well. Um, last thing, uh, not one of the last things, but I also want to show you guys that um, there's this awesome website. I mean, if you guys haven't heard about it, I mean, you guys are missing out. It's called conacademy.org. You need to visit, I mean, this, I'm going to hold this uh, thing up for a couple more seconds here so you can actually see it. Conacademy.org, okay? Um, this this website is one of the biggest tools that I use and a lot of, you know, different techniques that I learned from this website. This guy, Con, I mean, this guy graduated from Harvard and began making films on YouTube to help his other, other you know, uh, I think family members that were, you know, in a different country and, you know, just different subjects in math, science, economics, um, just anything you could think of. And next thing you know, he got real famous. Um, Bill Gates, uh, you know, saw that, donated money to him to help him, you know, to keep teaching online. And it's a free online thing. Also, you could download, he has all his videos on iTunes University. If you go on your iTunes store and you could click on, just search Khan Academy and you'll find all his videos so you can actually download and put them onto your iPod. So whenever you're on the bus or, you know, in your car riding around, you can actually watch the videos of Khan uh, without having actually be logged onto the website. But the website, you know, if you're at home, just watch the videos on the website. Um, and like I said, like I've, you know, say chemistry, if I had something, you know, if I needed to learn, I clarify something, I go on this thing and you can see the different categories and they have chemistry, general chem, organic chemistry, they have physics, they have everything. So you click on a video and each video is titled per subject, like, you know, basically like per chapter that would be equivalent to a book. So you would go on there, watch the video videos or maybe, you know, 8 to 15 minutes long and uh, it clarifies things so, so much better. So please, if you have any problems with any of your classes, um, go to conacademy.org and uh, it's... Yeah, I can't stress to you the importance of the actual website and how much it helps uh, an individuals. Um, next thing I want to do is I want to show you this other cool books. I personally, in high school, when I was going to high school, I didn't take any of the classes required for pre-meds to you know succeed in the future. I didn't know what I wanted to do in high school, so I didn't take any classes that were going to benefit me in the future. And even if I did, I probably wouldn't memorize or even take them seriously because I didn't um, didn't take high school seriously. Uh, but now that I am in college, that's all I do is study. But anyways, I bought these books that are equivalent to like high school level um, classes, which is great because when you go to college, they think that you've already taken these classes previously, so they're a little more faster paced. And these books that I'm talking about here are these Domestified books. Um, I bought this book. I actually have about 20 of these uh, Domestified books, uh, but I just brought to you the physics one. Uh, you can get them at Barnes & Noble's or any other websites. Just Google them, Domestified, and... Their subject vary, so they're domestified and in whatever subject. Anyways, uh, like say physics, I didn't take physics in, in uh, high school, so uh, for me, it's a, it teaches you, it goes through chapter by chapter, and it gives you a quiz at the end of every chapter, and even uh, halfway through the book, there's a midterm, and at the end, there's a final, and they're all multiple choice, and the answers are on the back, too. So, I mean, by the time you read a physics book, you basically have gone through a high school course, 
um, of physics. That's what it's equivalent to, and it's you know it's self-teaching. You have all the exams, midterms, and finals on there, and it, you know if you're self-motivated, you'd be able to do these books, and they're actually kind of fun. Um, there's like a guy there that like um, you know helps you along and tries to put things together. So it's like you actually have like a teacher there as the subjects go on and they get more difficult. You know, it's more it's a reassurance of the the person there. So I, I love these uh, the Mastified books makes things fun to learn. Uh, just you know, a great resource too as well, besides the Khan Academy, the uh, Cornell notes that I've gone over and then underlining. Um, next thing that I want to stress to you guys about too is to eat healthy. Um, yes, you're in college and sometimes you don't have time to eat or any of that. Um, same thing with the gym and all that. I, like right now I'm filming this video, I'm going to the gym right after this and then I'm studying from, you know, from noon all the way maybe till midnight or four in the morning depending on what I get done at Starbucks because uh, that's where I usually study at. But uh, I just need to stress to you about eating healthy. Your body physiologically needs the right amount of nutrients and all that in order to process, especially the amount of information that we have to cover as pre-meds. So, um, you know, here's a little thing to show you. Not necessarily this, but... Keep it whole grain, keep it healthy, eat your vegetables, have enough protein in your diet. Um, also, help healthy fats with the omegas to, you know, myelate, you know, your neurons, this and that, to help connect things better. You guys know that with pre-meds. Uh, so, you know, just eat healthy. Uh, exercise whenever you get the chance. I understand that exercising, you know, with the school and all that isn't feasible sometimes. So, um, just get in the gym if you can once, twice a week. I try to get in there at least four times a week at this point, And I like to eat healthy as much as I can. Um... You know, I have midterms this week coming up. I have three midterms. So this weekend is just packed with studying, maybe 15-hour sessions or more a day. So, um, you know, you're not the only ones. Just keep it up. Uh, it, you know, like I said, it'll all pay off at the end. And uh, one last thing, too. Like I said, um, don't be discouraged. Uh, study hard. I personally myself get a little, you know, familiarized, you know, you with me a little better is that I went to high school and I did terrible. I didn't pay attention. I graduated with a 2.9 GPA. Okay, I took two years off and I was always that kid that said, no, college isn't for me, you know, college is, you know, it's not, it's not, I'm not ever going to do that. My parents never pushed me to go to college. No one cared or, you know, even thought about, you know, me about going to college. That wasn't even a possibility. Um, but then I took two years off and I enrolled to a community college and all that. And then I graduated with a 3.97 GPA and I was involved with, um, with ASB clubs as a senator and I was a treasurer and if I thought I kept an honor society because I had a 3.9 GPA or higher and also took my EMT course and I was a valedictorian and had the highest grade at 99%, 99 point something percent which was the highest which was which was awesome too because there was kids there that were LVNs that were taking the EMT course to get like kind of like a refresher and I beat them you know as far as my my percentage and all that, so um, I succeeded well. So that transition between high school, high school doesn't mean much. You could have graduated for 4.5, whatever. I've known kids that I've gone to college with have graduated for 4.2, and I come from a high school that I graduated with 2.8 or 2.9, and I, you know, I not outsmarted them, but I outstudied them to have a higher grade in all my classes. So, uh, you know, GP in high school is not relevant much in college if you can't transition properly. That's why I'm doing these videos. Um, and I've managed to do that uh, successfully with a 3.97 GPA. Um, so that's why these tips that I'm giving you are vital because I've gone through it. I'm at a university at the, now, my third year, with still the same GPA. So these videos here are to help you guys out succeed and transition. So, you know, don't be on your high horse thinking you're coming out of high school for 4.7 GPA because, like I said, I've seen those kids with 4.5s come to the university level and have dropped to a you know 2.8 or 3.2 which is not going to get you close to medical school uh, the last thing I like to say is um, that my last recap here is this book um, if you guys are pre-meds it should be a requirement course where you have to read this book it is by Michael J. Collins MD orthopedic surgery or surgeon and it's called Blue Collar, Blue Scrubs, The Making of a Surgeon. Michael Collins. Michael J. Collins. If you, you're, you don't understand how stressful this book is. Um, Michael J. Collins, MD. One of the top-notch MDs. This guy, his emotional touch is crazy. He graduated from uh, Notre Dame like in two-year degree. And he took two to four years off of school. And he worked construction. And then 
finally decided that one day he just woke up and wanted to be an MD and he shows you the track and what he had to do to go back to a college, take two years of pre-med courses and then finally get into medical school and he talks about the whole medical school experience so you actually have knowledge of how medical school works. Uh, Blue Collar, Blue Scrubs, The Making of a Surgeon and also a second book to that if you read this book. Um, go out and get it. This is probably the most important thing that I showed you in this video. Blue Collar, Blue Scrubs, I showed it in my last video. Go out and get it. Good luck everyone. Um, hope to see you soon and I'll make videos posting um, hopefully in a couple of weeks or soon. Sooner than that. Bye.